I had to take the German exam uh, for philosophy graduate school. You had to do two languages. So I did uh, German and French. And so basically the test was, here's a passage from Wittgenstein, Ludwig Wittgenstein, translate it right there. Uh, you know, you have whatever it was, two hours to translate this, uh, this, this passage from Ludwig Wittgenstein. So I passed that, but have not used any of it since then. And I find that I pick up language languages pretty quickly, but I also forget them really quickly. So I also took all the way through advanced classical Greek, whereas, I mean, I could look at, I look at, I look at Greek now and I'm like, okay, I remember Kai, I remember that, you know, I remember some of these words and stuff, but man, it goes, it goes quickly. How about, how about you, Anthony? I'm assuming you use it more frequently than I do. Your oh, language. Greek, Greek and Hebrew. Yeah. yeah. I, I did have in the course of learning theology and so forth, a lot of theology has been done in other languages like German. And so there was a time when I learned a bunch of German theological terms, but I couldn't claim to know the language. I just knew certain terms that were frequently used, like uh, zeitgeist and, and that sort of thing, world, spirit, or ghost. But you mentioned uh, Wittgenstein, and it actually reminded me of a video I wanted to do. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the, I think it's the second to last line in his Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus. He says, basically, if you've understood me, He's arguing for the need for a purified language. And he basically says, if you've understood me up to this point, then you realize that all the propositions that I've laid out need to be thrown away once you've used them as la a ladder, so to speak, to, to climb up beyond them. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you realize what I'm saying, you realize that the language I use to say it is nonsensical, right? So you, you kind of get to the top by means of a ladder that you later turn around and say is useless. But the reason I think that's such a, a great line is because it reminds me of Islam, because Muslims will argue that the Bible's the word of God. They'll often appeal to the Bible in order to prove that Muhammad's a prophet or other things about Islam. But then they'll turn around and say, you know, this ladder's useless, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So supposedly it's good to get you to Islam, but once you get to Islam, suddenly it's it's corrupted, it's unreliable, uh, it's got all these perverted stories in it, and so forth. Yeah, Wittgenstein, he's one of the few philosophers where if he didn't come up with, with his theories, no one else would have, right? Uh, Kant is like that, right? No one would have come mm. up with, no one would have come up with Kant apart from Kant, right? Whereas, whereas lots of others, you know, if you're talking about Descartes and Hume and Locke and all these guys, um, if they hadn't come up with it, someone would have come up. It's like calculus. If, if Newton and Leibniz hadn't come up with calculus, well, mathematics had just developed up to the point where it's waiting for people to, you know, take it a, take it a step further and so on. Whereas these guys were just completely, completely different from, from everyone else.